Good morning, everyone. We are from Group 13, and we are going to explain something about prosodic features of phonology. My name is Muhammad Rizal Nasrudinilah. My name is Nini Gudiantarin Rukhalifa. My name is Laila Lutviana. And my name is Nurul Pangesti. Okay, so let's begin. Prosodic features are features that appear when we put sounds together in connected speech, so it doesn't appear in individual speech. Prosodic features include stress, tone, pitch, intonation, and length. The first is stress. Stress is the prominence that certain syllables carry which make them stand out from the rest of the syllables in a word or sentence. A syllable that stands out, it means it is stress. English has variable or flexible stress. This means that stress patterns can help distinguish the meanings of two words or phrases, which if it's not stress, it will be ambiguous. For example, we have the word console. If we say console, it means a device. For example, I spend too much time at my computer console. If we say console, it means to make it feel better. Like, she was so unhappy, I was unable to console her. Another example is entrance. If we say, if we put the stress in the first syllable, it would mean a way in. Like the example, the entrance to the building was locked. If we put the stress in the second syllable, it means to hypnotize. Like, are you trying to entrance me? There are four factors that make the stress syllable prominent or stand out than the others. The first is the loudness, the second is pitch change, the third is the quality or the difference between other words. If one word, if one syllable has different vowel than the others, it stands out. And the, the last is length. Longer syllables tends to be more stressed. Stress syllables tend to be longer. The stress patterns is not fixed in English, and it is impossible to formulate the rules of the placement of stress. Word stress cannot be merely decided from the syllable position in the word, but some generalizations can be made regarding the stress patterns in some word. Here are some stress patterns, like the derivational affixes of H, ANS, N, S, full, HUD, ICE, ISH, IF, LESS, LI, NES, SHIP, and R. Normally, do not affect the stress pattern on the word, like appear has the same stress as appearance. The inflectional suffixes of at, s, es, and ing do not affect the stress patterns of the root word. For example, inflate has the same stress as inflated. Words ending in the suffix ion take the primary stress on the second last syllable. For example, cultivation, application. Words ending in ik, ikal, ikali, ayal, ayali, iti, ios, and ion have the primary stress on the syllable before the suffix. For example, electric, electrical. Tone is the use of pitch in a language to distinguish lexical or grammatical meaning. A language is a tone language if the pitch of the word can change the meaning of the word. Languages that are not tone language, such as English, are called intonation language. There are two kinds of tones. First, registered tone, a tone which its pitch level doesn't change across the syllable. Second, counter tone, a tone with, with pitch changing across the syllable, whether from high to low or vice versa. Pitch is the relative highness or lowness of a tone perceived by the ear, which depends on the number of vibrations per second produced by vocal cords. Pitch is the main acoustic correlate of tone and intonation. Every individual has a pitch range which can be achieved by adjustment of the vocal cords. By tightening the vocal cords, a person can raise the pitch of the voice. By loosening them, one can lower vocal pitch. Pitch range can be divided into three parts, 
low, mid, and high. In contrast, high pitch range indicates an informational contrast. For example, I'm going to Harvard, not Yale, because high pitch range implies a contrast even when one is not explicitly present in the discourse. It can be used to single out individual words for special attention. I'd never do that. Low pitch range is used when the speaker wants to assert that two terms in successive tone units are some sort of equivalent example. I told you already, dummy. Okay, so the fourth is intonation. Intonation or pitch counter is the melodic pattern of an utterance. Intonation is primarily a matter of variation in the pitch level of the voice. But in such languages as English, stress and rhythm are also involved. Intonation conveys differences of expressive meaning such as surprise, anger, weariness, etc. Example First sentence, your name is John. Ending with falling intonation is a simple assertion. Then, second sentence, your name is John, ending with rising intonation, indicates a question. And then types of intonation. First, falling intonation. A. Statements. Example. Dogs eat bones. Open the door, please. B. W. H. Questions. Example. Where are you going? Which temple should I visit? 2. Rising intonation A. Yes, no question Example Are you happy today? Did you eat my bread? B. Tech question Example I'm not good enough for that, am I? 3. Rising falling intonation. Example. I love you, but you love her. Four. Falling rising intonation. Example. Don't cry. Thank you. Length. Length or quantity is a feature of sounds that have distinctively extended duration compared with other sounds. Length is related with vowels because every word that uses vowels also need length to express the meaning of words. The length of sounds of syllable and words it ver is variable are used in linguistic purposes. Let's look some of them. First, vowel length. For example, seed versus sit. When it pronounced, it has different meaning. Second, syllable length. For example, yes and yes. Yes. When it's pronounced, it means lack of interest, emotion, and so on. But yes, it's indicate extreme emotional involvement.